All right. Well, good morning, church. How's everyone doing this morning? Come on, we can be loud of that. How are we doing this morning? We're doing good? Yeah, that's better. Um, this morning, we're going to start off by seeing a couple of songs that are relatively new to most of us. Um, the first one's going to be Freedom. So if you'll stand with me this morning and sing this. God. Uh, this next one that we're going to sing is the song we sang last week, Oh Church Arise. So let's sing this together. Church arise and put your armor on. You 
Hear the call of Christ our captain One now believe And say that they are strong In the strength that God has given With shield of faith And belt of truth We'll stand against the devil's lies Battle cry is love, reaching out to those in darkness. Call to war, to love the captive soul, but to rage against the captor. And with the sword that makes the wounded whole, we will fight with faith and valor. When faced with trials on every side, we know the outcome is secure. And Christ will love, the Christ for which He died, an inheritance of nature. As the Son of God is stricken, then see his foes lie crushed beneath his feet. For the conqueror has risen, and as the stone is rolled away, and Christ emerges from the grave, this victory march continues till the day. Every eye and heart shall see Him. Spirit, come, put strength in every strife. Give grace to every hurdle that we may run. With faith to win the prize of a servant good and faithful. As saints of Of his grace, we hear their call and hunger for the day. Born with Christ, we stand in glory.
going to make some space here. Can you hear me now? Testing. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. I love the voices of children. I love to see. So a couple of, of cool things. Uh, the first thing, we are at, I think, maybe our max of 20 people who are specifically from Solomon today. <laughs> Amen. So next week, I expect 40. So I'm done, you, don't, you don't have to bring a lot, just one other. That's it. Uh, uh, secondly, uh, I, I've, I've got the privilege. God's blessed me in different opportunities, uh, definitely not because of me, but because of him. But I've got to, to speak about Jesus in a lot of different places. And there's a few things I've never done. All right. And one of those is a magic trick on stage. So there's not a stage. But I've always wanted to be like a stand-up comedian, but I'm too lazy, so I'd like try to be a sit-down comedian, but there was no opening there. And I've always wanted to do like magic tricks because I'm not good at them, but I, I slept at a Holiday Inn last night, and so I think I know how. And so I'm going to do, hold for it, I'm going to do a magic trick. So hold, you're holding. Like, all right. I'm going to do a little magic trick. It's kind of a fun trick. It's a purpose, and, a, and there's a reason. So stay with me. I, I don't want to be heretical at all. This is just a little trick that I learned. Uh, and I was showing Luke this morning. I pulled up here early and I was like, man, I, I went and raided Dollar General. And then I found two quarters and I went to the little uh, convenient market store. What's that? Bushes. I went to Bushes and I found two quarters and I bought a newspaper. Like, you know how long it's since I put a quarter in and did the little... And then I realized my, you know, the, the old self in me goes, I could get like as many of those as I want. Like what, we little, still live in a society that we live 12 papers and I paid 50 cents. So I'm selling papers in the back for a quarter of my cart afterwards. Um, no, I only got one. So, so I'm going to show you a little trick. This is your, I, I, as you see, I already did the trick once, but this is the, the local, not really local. This is Abilene's paper. Um, if anyone wants to know the weather today, a uh, high of 94, low is 96. Uh, it says sunny. So everyone needs to know. Right. So, so this is a, I'm going to show you a trick. And, and the reason I want to show you this, there's, there is a point. So I went to Dollar Tree and raided some props. These, these are scissors. They're real scissors. I don't know. Why would you do this? You ever, you see like, like, look, there, that's not how you test something. All right. So that's scissors. And then this is going to be my little notepad thingy right here. So, but I'm going to need a volunteer. If you don't volunteer, I'll volunteer. I need a, a vol volunteer. Not my son. He's got chores later. That's what I'm going to use that for. Another volunteer. You want to come here? It's real simple. Come here. All right, come on again. There you go. I, I need you to do me a flavor, okay? Is this real? Great, great. I'm so glad you. It's always good to use children and animals and things. All right, so stand here. All right, so I'm gonna get, let you choose. I'm gonna let you see here. It's normal paper. Uh, oh, there's a religious section. We could put it. Okay, all right. So there. Right, so oh, it's got Bible verses. I could just do the sermon right here. All right, so all right, so what you do? We want to pick a, a long paragraph. That's what I'm showing him here. So we're gonna pick something long for me. Let me ask you here. No. Oh, look at this one. You see how long that one is? All right, is that real? Feel that? Yeah. Okay. So you, you want to do this one? What do you think? Is that okay? You pick that? All right, thank you. Look, he helps him get him off stage. All right, no, go, hey, thank you. All right, so, all right, so what we're going to do, 
Normally, uh, I would hand the cutting implements to Brett because I cut myself a lot. So, all right, so I'm going to cut here this little uh, article. Talk amongst yourselves. It'll be a minute. It's been a while since I've like, dude, I'm cutting stuff at school. Like, man, if we had glue, I would be like putting it on my hand right now, let it dry and peel off. Do you remember those? Yeah. All right. Okay. Maybe just me. All right. No ideas. Children, don't do that. Don't eat paste. Um, it doesn't taste like frosting. Okay. That's, that's my paper. Okay, so we have an article here. I'm going to clean it up real quick. Are you guys amazed yet? No. <laughs> Only my mother would be honest. Okay. Wow. Okay, there we go. Yeah. I don't. Okay, there's, okay. Let's even it up a little bit here. All right, so let's see here. Even this up. All right, so that was the prep. I was all done in front of you. Nothing up my, I don't even wear long sleeves. Nothing up my sleeves. And I'm going to show you how I... Past all my classes in school, I have this really amazing way of memorizing. So I'm going to memorize real quick this article. Talk amongst yourselves, but quietly because I'm talking right now. All right. So just memorize that article. And I'm now going to pick a word from this article from the piece of paper I'm going to drop. Okay. I'm going to pick a word here. I'm going to write it down. Stay with me. I promise we're going to open our Bible here in a second. That pen doesn't work. I'm writing on your paper there. Sorry. Okay. Let's see. That feels like a good word. All right. So I need one more volunteer. Man, I'm going to volunteer. Every okay, okay, you're going to volunteer. All right, would you mind reading something out loud, but not yet? <laughs> simple word. Don't open that. You just hold on to that for now, okay? Don't open it. All right. So, here we go. Now, we are all going to participate in the trick. You ready? So, you're going to tell me when to stop. So, Guys, stop anywhere here. I won't stop here because it's my fingers. So anywhere here. So you uh, count of three, you say when to stop. One, two, three. Is that good? Do you want to go higher or lower? Lower? Anyone else want to go higher or lower? We good there? Right there. Are we sure? You picked it. Okay. Ooh, stop. All right. Okay, here we go. All right. So... Where's my top of my page? I don't know. Man, who knows? Well, this might not work. Okay. Well, you had to pick the small one. Who said keep going lower? Okay. So who, I need a volunteer to, to, to do me a favor and read where we, you all told me to stop. You want to read it for me? So do me a favor. Read to me. Don't, don't look yet. What's that first word on that piece of paper you told to stop? Do you know what that is? Read it. Ants. Say it really loud. Ants. Ants. Okay. So that's the trick. Um, open your box. Okay. So thanks a lot, guys. Okay. So see, y'all pick the word ants. You saw me cut it up. He picked the article. I didn't cut myself. Open up your little piece of paper over there. What's that word say? Ants. You know, you can show people. That's for you. So there you go. So you all picked it. We picked the article. We cut it, and we cut to the word, and I had it memorized. I can tell you the whole story. It's about my aunt. Not really. That's just the word aunt. All right. Were you amazed and mirage? Just amazing, right? I didn't hear any applause. Woo! All, right, all right. Thank you, sir. Next week, Brett's going to be doing a cutting someone in half trick, so come then. <laughs> So, 
That's my trick. Uh, I've, I've, like I've said, uh, lots of opportunities to speak about God in, in lots of different places. And sometimes when I speak with different ministers and pastors and preachers and teachers, they describe what we're doing here as the show. That it's a performance. That we're here to entertain. We're here to be amazed. If it wasn't messy, I would have like had glitter in my hands and went. Psh. And sometimes, and, and I'm not putting it down, I'm just trying to highlight it. We come to see what we can get. We, we come to church to say, what am I, you know, what, what flavor of donut am I going to get today? What bit of entertainment? Am I going to receive today? What's the next trick? We're going to look into that today. We're going to look and see in John chapter 4 that, that Jesus even emulates and shows that you know, if, if, if you don't see something, if you don't see something miraculous, if you aren't entertained, if you don't just get your ears tickled, then maybe you won't even believe. And we're going to look into this, that, that Jesus is going to reference this. And I don't want you to miss it. Because that's just a silly trick. And we're going to see here through Scripture that faith in your walk with God comes through one thing, and it's not through some sleight of hand. Faith, Scripture says, comes from hearing and hearing of the Word of God. And I hope and pray that as you, as you come and you be a part, and we keep inviting and we fill this room till we got to go get a bigger room, and we continue to invite the Solomon. Do you know the, the city, the word Solomon, it means peace? We invite this place of peace to know the Prince of Peace. That, that we're not doing it to be, have our ears tickled, but to start helping us walk in the footsteps of Jesus. So, before we get into the Word, let's pray. Dearly Father, we praise you. God, I thank you for, for having fun and playing. And, and But in this moment, Lord, as we started this day at 930, entering into your throne room in prayers, we continue to, to praise you and worship songs. And we continue to, to spend time and and focus into communion, and then as we had now beginning to do, opening your word, because Scripture makes it clear, faith comes from hearing of these things. I just ask that you bless us. Lord, I don't know the heart of every person in here, but you do. You care deeply about them. And I pray that this lesson be your words, Lord, not mine. And if there's anyone who's here who's, who's got a burden or a fear or something they won't, or just can't seem to let go, Lord, I pray as we see today that we can run to bring that to You and lay it at Your feet and change our walk. Lord, help us stop running and come to the feet of Your Son. Bless this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. John chapter 4. John chapter 4, picking up the finishing up this chapter today. And next week, we're going to be in Romans 7 and following. Please read ahead. Get in your word. John chapter 4 picks up in verse 43, and it says, After two days, he left for Galilee. For you see, we saw last week that, that Jesus, tired from the journey, but always seeing the ministry in the moment, stops by a well and has a conversation and sees the unseen woman. And we saw that if you, if, you, if you didn't, if you weren't here, please, you can go online. You can listen to that. And I pray you, you spend time and, and seek the Word of God and seek the importance of what it is to see the unseen people. The, the ministry of that moment spread through the city. And we know that through verse 39. It says, many of the Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's 
testimony. If you don't know that God calls you into ministry and just you sharing what God's done for you opens the door and it reflects the light of God in you and allows the message of God to share, look at the power of what that woman's testimony was. The simple testimony was, he told me everything I ever did, he sees me. So when the Samaritans came, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. Verse 41, it says, and because of his words, Jesus's, many more became believers. Because of his words, because they, they said, wow, God, this is more, this is, this is precious. The words you offer are life. They begin to believe. It's a powerful testimony, but we pick up now in verse 43. And two days have passed. Two days have gone, and then Jesus is continuing to be on mission, but still seeing the ministry, and he heads out, and he goes, and he left for Galilee. Jesus himself had pointed out that a prophet is without honor in his own country. The rest of verse 44. He's saying, look, I understand that, that I'm going to be going to a place where they know me. I understand I'm going to a place where, where they, they didn't believe in me. Do we maybe have moments like that? I mean, we live, this is a small town here, right? How many people are in Solomon? Two thousand, six, two thousand, two thousand six hundred, so two thousand people. So we all know just about everyone, right? I mean, like when Susie gets new tires on her car, y'all know the size and the radius mount, right? I mean, we things stay pretty. Yeah, things happen. We know. And in, in a small town, it might be kind of hard. And and I found out that they even know about us. This town does already. Y you guys are making waves. Little did you know. And we're ta they're talking. And those weirdos wearing masks piling into the school. Man, don't you, the weekend's supposed to get away from school. And they're going and they're singing and they're praising and they're opening their Bible. But sometimes, my, you mean they're going to church? You know what they do? You know who they are? Can you understand the phrase that Jesus says sometimes a prophet is without honor as their own hometown? We maybe have some things in our closet that, that, that we're afraid that our neighbors might know. The redeeming power of Christ as God put all of those things on the cross. He says you don't have to carry them anymore. And he goes back to this town and He's like, I know they're, they're, they're going to look at me as that young kid. That young kid who Mary got impregnated by God. The young kid who would have been an outcast because of a, a birth that was supposedly miraculous, but they all knew what they thought they happened. An outcast child who was a little different. And now is preaching like he's holy or something? He, he's saying, I'm, I'm different and, 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 I, and I've got something for you to offer. So he heads back home. Verse 45, when he arrives in Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him. It's like, wait a second, Robert, they like him. Yeah, but keep reading. They had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem in the Passover feast. For, they're also, for they had also been there. What's that talking about? That's John chapter 2. That's the wedding feast. They had heard and seen about the miraculous turning water into wine, and they were intrigued. They saw the magic trick on YouTube. And now they're wondering if bread is going to cut someone in half tomorrow. <laughs> and like, wow, I want to see that again. Let's grab a different paper. Or They're intrigued, but there's no belief. Their ears were tickled, or the music was just right, or the donuts were the flavors I liked. 
So they hadn't believed, but they were intrigued. Yet the Samaritans, don't forget the start of this chapter, or the start of this paragraph, verse 43. For two days Jesus had stayed there because they had heard the word and believed. These Galileans were intrigued. They hadn't yet believed. They didn't fully understand, but they wanted more wine. They wanted more for themselves. Verse 46. Once more he visited Canaan and Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal officer whose son lay ill in Capernaum. Now let's set the scene. i got to let you know where this is. At the Sea of Galilee, right? Imagine a big map. I would have prepared, I could have showed it to you. A big map, you got to see. The bottom part of here is Capernaum. It's next to the shore. It's low next to the shore of Galilee. 17 miles away is where they're at. Higher up in the hills is where this uh, meet, meeting takes place, the royal officer in Jesus. Continue now in verse 47. When the man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son who was close to death. Now, sometimes when we read Scripture, sometimes we have a hard time connecting into it. And I'll tell you, there have been so many times I've struggled with it. And, and the moment I, my wife gave birth to my son, I, I started to begin to understand the sacrifice Jesus must have had to do, God must have had to do. Because that's my boy. I remember, I, uh, it was a couple, I don't know, maybe three or four months ago. And uh, my son cried out. Forgot what he'd done. He'd hurt himself downstairs. Remember that, Andre? He'd, he'd, and he cried out in pain. You know, and, and we got like a couple modes of movement. You got the, uh, yeah, I'm coming downstairs. I don't want to go do something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, be there in a minute. Or the, uh, I can walk a lot faster with my voice. What do you want? Everyone do that. Your internal PA system through your house. You know, right? But then my son screamed in pain. Now this big boy don't go quick, but I did then. My wife thought I was going to fall down the stairs. I'm a little bit accident prone. Okay, I'm a lot accident prone. All right? I went flying down the stairs because my son cried out. What would you do if your child was sick? This royal officer had heard of Jesus and heard what he had done, and he goes running to God. And he begged. He begs, he says, Jesus, my son. What I love about this is, is, guys, maybe we can't identify with that, but I bet there's something in your life that you would love to give to God and say, God, please heal this. Please heal this addiction or this struggle in my marriage or this struggle in my work or a sickness. Heal this. How often do we go running to God or do we run to the things of the world? And he goes running. He begged him to come and heal his son who was close to death. Now, verse 48, now when we read this, you're going to say, man, Jesus, <laughs> what, what's going on here? But look what he says. Got to understand the setting, but let's read it first. 48 says, unless you people. Now, he's not speaking to just one person. All right? He doesn't say unless you, this person, unless you, unless you people. So here's the scene. He comes back to Galilee. He's in a place where he's training. He's a rabbi. He would have been teaching. He's there teaching. Here comes this royal officer. It's important to know he's a royal officer, right? He's a royal officer. Herod Antipas would have been the one who's in charge at this time. A royal officer. 
it wouldn't necessarily have any way of moving quicker, but there would have been a lot more freedom for him to travel. Most likely, he would have had like a horse. He could have easily gone from the 17-mile journey to hunt down Jesus. But even if he couldn't, a 17-mile journey is easily walkable in anywhere between four and six hours. And he comes and he goes. That's walkable, right? You're just going to go walk to God if you're afraid for your son? Well, let's give it a full six hours. He heads there. And he finds him, and he sees Jesus teaching. He walks up, and he says, come heal my son. And then Jesus uses the moment for ministry. He says, unless you people. See, the Samaritans believed because they heard, and they were sitting there going, what's Jesus going to do? Is he going to heal him? Are we going to start packing up our stuff and go for a hike for 17 miles to see this, this, this boy who's close to death raised? What is he going to do? Do you, do you see that they're leaning in for the, for the next trick? What I love about Jesus is he speaks the truth. Cutting to the quick, he says, unless you people see signs and wonders, Jesus told them you will never believe. You're just coming to be entertained. Where's your faith? This father heard the word and ran. Yet they were sitting back. We know that this is the heart of the father because continue reading. It says, verse 49, the royal officer said, Sir, come down before my child dies. God, come change my life before my marriage dies. God, come and change my life before I have no hope. God, come and change my life before my child doesn't know you. He begs and he pleads. He's not distracted by the crowd. He's not bothered by the test of God. He says, I want you. See, not only did he hear the word believed, but the next thing, he heard the word, he went and found the truth, and he invited him home. You know, we don't want this to be just something you come do on Sunday and leave it here. We want you to take this home. We're talking about that we're going to start doing these Wednesday night get-togethers and studies. The idea is this. We want to invite you into our homes. We want to be invited into your homes. We, we want to gather in to say this is more than just Sunday. The Father begs and with faith pleads, come home. I love the answer here is, is, is God says with simplicity, go. Your son's alive. Go, Jesus replied. Your son will live with what faith it is to invite me home. It's done. It wasn't, there was no works-based thing here. He wasn't like, well, when you get there, when, I, when you finally do it all the right way, when I walk into your room, then you'll get it. When, when you go further or, or make it more, he's like, it's done. Go. Yeah, Robert, but I haven't memorized this enough yet. It's, <laughs> knowing more of this is just going to make you realize you got to do more here. God's done it all. Go. How often do we get distracted by saying, but, but I don't have it all right yet. He's done it all right. So we get to then go. Well, what does that mean? What does it mean for today? It means when you get, to, you have this privilege and this opportunity. Brett said it, and I, and I love it. I'm going to give some confession here. I come from a culture. <laughs> I come from a culture that says you got to do a lot of work so that you can get okay with God. I'm going to confess it to you. But I'm going to tell you what. Isaiah makes it clear. Every ounce of work I do is like filthy rags. 
in comparison to God, nothing I do will ever compare to the grace he gives. That being said, I still get to go. Imagine if he would have said, Jesus, no, no, wait, Lord, you got to do it my way. Imagine if he went to Jesus, no, hold, Lord, you got to come with me because i got to make sure it works. And let me point out what I'm talking about. Keep reading because I want you to see this because the work of God was done and then he had the privilege to live into his new reality. You've heard a lot about that. You're going to hear more about that because Brett's going to talk this next week or or, or Sunday about the the truth that we understand who we are and what we've been redeemed from. you got to know where you came from so you know where you're going. All right, and I've talked to you a couple weeks ago. We talked about the analogy of this chair, that this is a chair. I know it's a chair. I could tell you where it's made from, probably China. And, you know, I could tell you all about the chair. And, and, and I know the chair, and I even might say I believe in the chair, but I'm not willing to sit in the chair. Is this really belief? No, this is knowledge, right? This is knowledge. I know where to go to find chairs. This is knowledge. I know that it's padded, but this is belief. Now, let me tell you what. Me sitting in this chair doesn't make it a chair. It just means I go. I walk in faith. Didn't make the chair. I'm not the one supporting myself. The chair is. So in this understanding, as you begin to walk with God, wherever you are with God, maybe there's someone in this room right now who says, you know what, I I, I want to believe, but I'm I'm afraid. And you're at that point in your life that says, okay, God, I choose you, and you want to know more. And there's more to do, not out of obligation, but out of opportunity. We'd love to talk to you about that. But it comes in this understanding. Go find God. Hopefully you will hear the word here. Hopefully you will see the faith manifested in us here. But it's for every one of you to choose. It doesn't stop there. He could have stayed in Capernaum and goes, I've heard about Jesus. I've got faith. And never go. But watch as this faith unfolds in his life. And I don't want you to miss the the beauty of Scripture that there's a purpose for every word in this book. Jesus tells him in verse 50, Go, Jesus replied, your son will live. The, the, The man took Jesus at his word. I took the knowledge and I believed that belief implies action. Watch what happens and departed. He went. Now, again, I'm reading it in a you know, Robert Dad paradigm. Where do you think, don't read ahead. If you already did, it's okay. Forget for a moment. Where do you think he's going? Where would you go if you just heard your son who's at the brink of death is healed? Where would you go? This is participation. It's all right. I won't make you pick a magic trick. Where would you go? You go home. Man, I'd take up long distance running right now. And that sounds horrible. I'm a conservative man. (laughs) I I keep my to-go bag with me. I'm the ultimate prepper. You know, I'm taking a taxi or something. But no, I would go running. Or at least a nice brisk walk. I'd be heading to my son. And I'm going to confess probably more out of doubt than faith. Is it really true? I'd want to go see it. Would it be that little question in your mind? Maybe, if not, I don't know. But look what he does. Continuing now in verse 51. While he was still on his way, his servants met him with the news 
that his boy was living. Then he inquired as to the time when his son had gotten better. And they said to him, here's the word. It's underlined in my Bible. If it's not, you probably should in yours. Yesterday. Wait a second. God healed him yesterday, and he's only 17 miles away. Why isn't he at the city? Yesterday. At one in the afternoon, he had uh, plenty of time to get back home. Yesterday, at one in the afternoon, the fever broke and left him. Then the father realized that was the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, your son will live. And so he and his whole household believed. This was the second sign Jesus performed after coming from Judea to Galilee. First and foremost, and this is a little bit off point, but I want you to see it. He had believed and heard the message and the word of God, your son will live. Let me tell you what faith comes from hearing and hearing of the word of God. Hopefully what you hear here is the word of God. He recalled the word of God. He had meditated. He had remembered the word of God. And if you hear stuff up here that isn't the word of God, please question it. He had heard the word. But I love, God said go. He didn't say go home. He said go. Go on your way. Man, when I was afraid that my son was hurt, I went running. When I got confident my son just wants the password to the internet, we do the long distance intercom system. What do you want? He just went on his way. He was a royal officer. He had work to do. He lived in the peace that God's got his son. And he just like, all right, let's go talk. And I love it. And it seems a very small thing. But I want you to see what it's saying here. Is he lived a new life. We're going to sing a song in a minute. It's going to talk about this idea that we spend on a long journey uh, a kind of, I, I image it like a winding road and we're trying to find truth. And I think every one of us have those moments where we're digging further in and it's just been a long road. There's a scripture, Proverbs, and Proverbs, go flip over to Proverbs if you like. Think of the Psalms right in the middle of your Bible and then go write uh, Psalms, Proverbs. Chapter 3 says this in verse 5 and following, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. That's the first part about that. Is I don't first lean on the way I know. Don't, don't lean on the windy path, that, that 17 mile journey that you've been traveling on. Don't continue down that path. In all your ways, submit to him. In all your ways, God says go. As you go, just live your life free from the burden of the fear of, 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 of what's going to happen in my marriage, the fear of what's going to happen to my child, the fear of what's going to happen to my job, the fear of what's going to happen because of sin. Go trusting in God, and he will make your paths straight. No longer is it a windy road to God. Now, what this is not saying, that life will always be straight roads. Let me clarify. When God says he's got you, he's got you. And so often, at least for me, I fight against the path. You know, Scripture makes it really clear. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's it. The whole law and prophet. All of this, man, our sermons could be way shorter. I'm just telling you, that's it. That's the, that's all, everything we always talk about boils down to one thing. Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him to me. He will make your path straight. That's it. Just trust God. Sermon done. It's all complete. Just trust God. Okay, we're done. We're good. Come next week. Guess, next sermon. Trust God. If, if, if we could just obey, life would be easy. 
But because God's a loving Father, He allows us this beautiful unfolding of His love. And He says, you know what? There is an easy path, but I'm willing to walk the windy road with you. And there'll be those moments when you just realize, man, I'm way over here, and you, and you wonder, you know, I'm not a golfer. Uh, I like golf carts, and, and so do you all here in Solomon, right? You know, I like golf carts, and I've, I've wanted to know if we could pay, like, the, the golf cart polo. I tried to drive by and hit my golf ball, you know, things like that. But uh, friends of mine like to do this thing called golfing. Can there be, like, indoor golf? It's hot, right? And so... So we go golfing, and every time I hit it, it's like, it's, it's, it's not pretty, okay? I realize there's, it's called the rough, right? That's, it's just really rough, you know what I mean? And then you're hunting for your golf ball. I carry two or three in my pocket, and I randomly find it exactly where I'm standing, right? And I'm like, oh, hey, look, there's my ball. Um, and, 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 but it's, it's, it's a rough path. And then you got to really whack at it, you know, and you got to do like the first hit, that's to take the grass out of the way, and the second hit's to dig the hole so you can get the other ball, and the third hit, that's the ones that count, that's when you throw it. And then, uh, but you know, it's a rough path, but it's still golf, it's still a part of the journey. But then my friend gets up, right? He's like, just do it like this, Robert. Puts the ball down, you just got to relax, he just does this weird, you know, you know. I don't, you know, and he just hits it, and it's beautiful, and it's like, man, you cheating. You know, and it just hits up onto the green, and it rolls pretty and beautiful. You know, that's just, it's, that's magic, you know. <laughs> and it's just easy, and the path is straight, and you go on these things, they're like 600-yard golfing, and they said, yeah, you can do this in three. I'm like, I'm at like 21 where you just give it to you. How many of us are kind of that way in our life with God, that we're, we're taking a lot of mulligans? And God says, there is a straight path. Relax your shoulders. Use the tools I've given you. And just go. The beauty is that God is with us in the rough patches and in the blessed moments. And the power of what it is when you start sharing the testimony of what God has done in your life. Did you see that verse? Did you see the understanding? He realized your son will live, so he and his whole household believe. The reason we want to get together is because the world is telling us to separate and to isolate and not be a family and the power of what it is to gather and for me to serve my testimony and for you to share your testimony is by the testimony of what God says belief comes into the family. So I don't know where you're at, but I'm going to take a wild guess. There's some of you in this room that have been on a long journey. Amen? There's some of you in this room that sickness has infested your life. Fear of covid Fear of coveting and money and job and addiction and sin. And let me tell you, if I'm not hitting you, those fears are in me. I don't stand here and tell you I've got it perfect. I stand here to tell you the one who is perfect has me. And I'll tell you right now, the one who is perfect has you. And Brett said, you know, if there's anyone here that needs God, he's here and he's open and he is available. And it starts with listening to the word. 
and drawing near to God and then go. Without that faith, the go, it's all right. I probably prefer that song than what I'm saying. It's all right. Without the faith, the action is of useless value. But with the faith, with the knowledge of what God says, he brings life back where the world says is no life. The first miracle that we saw in John chapter 2 brought life into a marriage that they thought was broken The second miracle in John chapter 4 brings life to something the world said was dead. And if you don't know that God can bring you back life, then go to him. We're going to sing a song here in a minute, but before we do, I want everyone to stand with me, if you would. No more magic tricks. This is all real. I want you to close your eyes. And just listen. And there are some of you in this room, and I'm going to close my eyes with you. I can't see you. No one can see each other. Only God can see you. And there are some in this room that have things they just need to let go and give to God. I have things that I need to let go and give to God. And I know there are ones in this room who need to let go and give to God. And this is the moment to say, God, I give it to you. I come to you. Whether you come running or crawling or begging or pleading, and you say, God, I give it to you. And you don't need to run anymore. You listen into God. And we're going to keep working with you and walking with you and letting you know that that now that you understand that you get to choose God and that God has chosen you, then you get to live this new life. But it starts with listening to his words. With your eyes closed, I'm going to read a couple words that we've, we've talked about, but I'm going to read to you what Scripture says. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, Consequently, faith comes from hearing in hearing the message, the message heard through the word of God. Second Corinthians chapter 5 says, For we live by faith, and this is why your eyes are closed, not by sight. And the verse I've already read for you, but I want to read it again. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs 3 And lean not on your own understanding in all your ways, in everything, in everything that's holding back, into the sins that you won't let go, submit to him. And he will make your path straight. If there's anyone here that has not yet done that, I ask you to call to God. I ask you to give all those things to him and come along with us and and grow with us and study with us and keep putting the word in. But it starts with hearing his word. I'm going to say a prayer, and I want you to keep standing, and I want you to sing with us. It's going to, we're going to be singing about this journey and singing about finding God. If there's anything afterwards you guys need, you want to talk and pray and study, you please come to us, and we'll do that. But right now, I want you to submit to God all your worries. You submit to God all your fears and addictions and your doubt. And God will say, Go. Live this new life. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you. Lord, I know there are people hurting right now. So Lord, we take all of the pain and we say it at the altar and we praise you, Lord. Lord, we praise you for, 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 the, for the fear that allows us to seek you. We praise you for the, the windy path that allows us to see the truth, to come to the straight, to come to the light. We praise you ultimately and only for your son who nailed it all on the cross and then came down from the cross and gave us a new life. We praise you. As we begin to sing, Lord, we praise you. We praise you. We praise you.
We pray to you. Same old road for miles and miles. You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. Trying to fill the same old holes inside. There's a better life. There's a better life. You got pain. He's a pain taker. He's a shame breaker We've all searched for life day in the dead of the night We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight We've all run the things we know it just ain't right But there's a better life there's a better life If you got pain Here's a pain saver If you feel lost He's a pain maker If you need freedom Baby He's a pretty shaking savior If you got shame He's a shame breaker If you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. Come on. If you believe it, if you receive it. that bridge one more time if you believe it if you receive it if you can feel it somebody testify if you believe it if you receive it if you can feel it somebody testify testify if you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a pain maker. If you need freedom, save it, he's a prison shaking savior. He's a prison shaking savior if you got chains. He's a chain breaker. Amen. Lift up a joyful noise. Amen. Woo! Amen. Well, just a reminder that um, after the service, or after now, in like 30 seconds, we're gonna have that um, we're gonna have that meeting. 
and uh, the, for the sign up for volunteering. And um, let's just pray together real quick. Dear Lord, we just praise you um, in, in your holy name, Lord, hallowed be thy name. Um, we thank you for for what you've done for us, Lord. We we've we've all been on a journey, as Robert prayed earlier. We've all been on a long journey, Lord, and you're the only one who has the power to break our chains, Lord, the chains of sin. And we praise you for that, God. And I just pray that as we as we leave here this morning and go back to our daily lives during the week, Lord, I pray that you um, would just help us to not not to keep your greatness bottled up, but Lord, that we would we would be a light for you everywhere we go. And that we would just testify, Lord. I just pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for worshiping with us this morning and go in peace.